Now, as I said, I said to you earlier about two locos on the same piece of track. Yeah. So let's change the direction of that locomotive there, and let's go to our other locomotive, which is our class 24 on address number 24. Mm -hmm. So as we do there, select that, accept it. Let's change the direction. Now, if we get the 24 going nice and slowly, and now we go back to address number three, We've now got those two locomotives running on the same piece of mm -hmm. track as you can see. Let's name our class 24 mm -hmm. now. You'll notice at the moment it's only identified by lock, which is the decoder reference, 0024. Yes. The locomotive number three, the name, is the generic name given by that. So that set. would come up all the time then? All the time. So although changed. you've given this one the um, address 0024, yeah. if you did that 0025, before you named it, it would be locomotive three. Locomotive number three. Because we all start off on number three right. it's a factory setting so let's go into the menu on that uh, so we're going to edit the name again yes and we'll backspace to set the name so let's call it class 24 just keep it simple And now you'll notice it says lock 0024 class 24. So both of our locomotives now can be identified by the class of locomotive. And if we wanted to, we could add the capside numbers, yep. so the D number, or if it was a steam loco, 75009 or 002, whatever mm. that would be. But we also can call it by a class. So it's just making it easier to identify locomotives on yes. your own. And if you do change the number, the the top one, yes. it carries its name with it. It carries its name with it within right. the locomotive roster within Dynamis. Mm. And remember, you can have up to 40, lo 40 locomotives named as you wish in that roster. Mm -hmm. Double heading or consisting, something I can't do on my model railway, but with Dynamis you can. You certainly can Tony, yes, and what we're doing already is we're bringing a class 20 nose front around onto the second class 20 to do a prototypically British double heading exercise. Because these were type 1s and most of their duties were type 2, so yeah. this is very typical where you have the cab at the outer end. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, and obviously on American layout, you can actually have up to five locomotives in what they call the consist. Yes. Uh, multiple locomotives. So operating. two at the front, one in the middle, another one at the back and exactly, so on. Exactly, yeah. And Dynamics will actually also operate advanced and universal consist. Mm. So it, it's an advanced system to do that See, as well. See, what we're doing now, if that were mine, unless I had masses and masses of individual switches, coming together like this would be impossible because this one would just scoot away at the same speed as this one. Yeah. And again obviously showing the very slow running characteristics yes. of which you can achieve. So we're just going to couple up nice and steady on there. So Tony, we've got our two locomotives together, um, so what we'll do, we'll put them now into a consist. Uh, very simple to do, what we do is we press the consist button which is there, and it asks me do I want to add these locomotives to a consist. So I'm going to accept number one, press the accept button, and it asks me there do I want it to be universal or advanced. We're using the universal consist. The differences between those are explained in the guide, in aren't the, they? In the manual, okay. yes they are. Yes, they uh, so we've got loco 21 in the consist, we now go to our other locomotive which is address number 7 and we bring number 7 up 
we press that, we press consist, accept, and we've now got our two locomotives, double headed, consisted together, and they're ready to move away. So these will operate then under one command? One command, yes. Okay, well, let's see them go. Okay, Tony, uh, we've expanded the dynamic system, we've added the Pro Box, we've added some additional receivers around the layout. Uh, you've got your handset. This is a brand new one. Brand new handset, yes. Uh, obviously, for you to operate trains on this layout, you need to upload the roster of the layout. Um, it, over to you to do okay, that. Okay to reset internal locomotive lists. And it's the tick. Yep. It says no locomotive available. And now I have it, so let's play trains. Okay, Tony, so which loco would you like to drive? Well, the class 25 okay. over there, if I may, please. Certainly, well, if you press F1, that will start the engine up. It does. And now, if you use the joystick, that will ex accelerate and open the throttle up for you as well. There we go. And F2 and F3 will give you your horn sounds. Really? F2 a single tone, F3 will give you a double tone. Terrific. It's very, very smooth, isn't it? It just mm -hmm. goes away without the slightest hesitation. Well, I'll start my favourite at now, the 37. And yours is sound as well? Sound as well, yes, yeah. Of course, you're coming out of the tunnel, so you've got to get a bit of horn as you come out of the tunnel, of course. That's a different note. And we start accelerating. You've shown me consisting where you control two locomotives under one command. Yes. The next thing we're going to do is banking, which is part of consisting. Yes. But this is going to be much more fun. Although you can do consisting on one controller, banking, we're going to do it with two. And you're going to be the train driver, and yep. I'm going to be the banking driver. And because we're using the two handsets, Tony, this is one of the features of the Pro Box allows you to have up to four controllers, four people controlling the layout if you wish. So this is one of those nice features which the Pro Box allows you to do, uh, have more than one operator. Well, this really does look exciting. So that's our Broms Grove. Yes. And that's our Licky Incline. So let's see if we can do it. So I'm the driver of the banking engine and I'm coming up to kiss the buffers, Tony. I have to say, I could never get smooth running performance like that on analog. I can get smooth performance, but that is an absolute crawl. I mean, it's just sort of indiscernible. That really is just kissing the buffers. Now, I would then pat the horn to you okay. to say that I'm now buffering up. Yeah. Okay? Yes. And then you would start off. And this is super smooth. The 20's done its job. We got the thing going, so we ease up. Train engine takes the train away, 20 stops, goes back in the opposite direction, wrong line working to pick up its next banking job. Well, thanks once again, Tony, for the explanations. I think Pleasure. I'm able to understand. In fact, I was able to change the locomotive and 
I did it without your help. I chose the locomotive and was able to work this, so there's something. We've watched this, we've seen all the demonstrations so far, and very impressive too. Now, although this is a, a marvellous model railway as an introduction, it's a bit small, isn't it? Yes, a little bit, yes. You've heard already some of the sounds, because this is really an exciting development of DCC. But what we're going to do now, close here, and thanks once again to Steam. We're going to go to my home, where I have a great big train set, little by them. Now that's analogue, I'm going to unplug all my controllers, we're going to put one of your Deltics on, give her 15 Backman Mark 1s, and really say what Great sound fun. is like. So let's pack up here, Tony. See you in Lincolnshire.